Road damage detection and classification with detection tool and faster arsenal. I bring back to find Intomida. This is a step that we explore and find the reason for this task. We start with exploring the state of the art object detection method. Then we do data exploration and train evaluation splits. We experiment with pre trained base models for detection tools, faster RCNN implementations. We experimented data augmentations and custom size ratios and other hyperparameters. We also do the evaluations on the validation side and the test set. Finally, we give recommendations for data labeling. The first step is we explore the state of the art object detection methods. There are many state of the art object detection methods and they constantly evolving. However, there are few main family of them. The first is region based convolutional neural network. RCNM includes a Resin proposer model, feature extraction model, and classifier model. Its main disadvantage is about time. First, RCNN they train at a single model, but still it has a disadvantage of needing to provide resin proposer as the input. Faster RCNN incorporate resin proposers using RPN or resin proposer network, and it improves the training as well as object decision time and accuracy. Next is you only look once or Jolo family. With Jolo, Jolo version 2, version 3, and version 4. They divide the image into grid cells and the features from each cell predict boxes with the center fall into it. Its main advantage is that it's faster than RCNN in general, but it is slightly less accurate in general comparing to RCNN. Next type of detection method is single shot detection. It's run CNN through the image only once and use anchor boxes. It's used feature extracted at different layers for prediction of boxes with different size. Its advantage is it provides better balance between time and accuracy, but it still has some issues with the boxes with smaller sizes. The next step that we do is data exploration and train evolution splits. We first explore the damage type distributions and see that they have different numbers of images per country and also different damage type distribution per country. There is some indication from here that it, we need to decide to combine or separate the data. And when we contact the organizer, they prefer to have the single motor for all the three countries. So we combine the data. Next, we do the train evolution split. We use country of origin as the stratified field. And if we combine the data, we have better balance of the damage type distribution. It may half because the damage type complement with one another, but it may hurt because one country may dominate in a specific type of damage. And here is the main architecture of RCNN. We start with the input image. Then there is a pipeline network. That pipeline network includes a server of CNN layers to extract features at different levels. Though extracted features gonna pass through another network called the region proposer network in which it's going to provide us the object score as well as the anchor deltas. Though delta means the centers and the size of the anchor boxes related to the original image. When we have the box proposers and the extracted features, we pass them through a region of interest pooling layer to get standardized input for the next neural network. That next part of the network is called the box height and its job is to fine tune the classification as well as the bounding box predictions. When using faster RCNN, we need to provide the backbone network. We explore several backbone network, then finally select the R101 and X101 feature pyramid network. The reason is that they have better accuracy on average precision with 42% and 43% respectively. The X101 is having better accuracy, however, we still explore R101 because it's faster and less of a fit. We use detection true implementation of faster RCNN. To start with, we use detection two's default configurations. Here are the results. It takes only 0.82 seconds per iteration, and each iteration consists of 32 images, while it takes double the time for training for X101. It converts at 85,000, while it takes longer to converge for X101. The F1 score that we have is 52.85 on evaluation side versus 54.25 for X101. Therefore, we decided to stick with X101 for further experiments because we cannot experiment uh, both of these for many future experiments. The next exploration direction is to do the data augmentation. So we stick with 
define common sense augmentation they are image resizing and horizontal flipping next augmentation type that we experimented is generating artificial patch and here's an example the green box and the blue boxes are those with real damage type while the yellow box here is the artificial patches there are complicated way to generate these artificial patches one of them is to use GAN to generate it however we would like to have a faster way to experiment this that's why we just samples from existing damage type instead of use GAN to generate the damage path in order to find the location to place this artificial patch there is also a complicated way which is to use machine learning approach to detect the road regions and place the damage into the regions but we use a simpler heuristic which is we sample from existing location of the same types to get one location and place that into existing image so it's simpler there are several algorithms to make the patch which is more natural to the existing or targeting image. We use quick color transfer in order to make the colors of the patch which is more natural to the targeting image. We need to generate the damage type and keep the balance of damage type per country. So we provide different augmentation probability for different damage type and different countries. We also experimented with other augmentation like random cropping, branded contrast, and random cutouts as well. Here are the result of using deform augmentation versus deform and other augmentations. It takes a lot longer to converge because we have more data. Next, the F1 score reduced slightly with a complicated augmentation and therefore we decide not to use complicated augmentation and only stick with deform augmentations. Next, we also experiment test time augmentation, specifically we experiment horizontal flipping, image resizing and random brightness contrast adjustment as well. The TTA result show that it takes a lot longer to predict and in this case it's about tenfold longer and it's reduced accuracy actually. Therefore, we do not use TTA in our implementation. We also explore custom anchor size and ratios. First, we explore the bounding box areas distributions and see that most of the areas are distributed around 0 to 400 square pixels. Therefore, we change the size to get smaller size. We only stick with 32, 64, and 128. We also explore bounding box ratios distributions. Those are the height over width ratios and see that the distribution is skewed toward the lower end. Thus, we focus on the smaller ratios like 0 0.1, 0 0.5 instead of the default one. And the result is that it takes shorter train iteration because we provide appropriate anchor size and ratios. And it improved the F1 score slightly. However, we decide to just stick with the default configuration because the custom size and ratios may improve training time and increase the accuracy slightly. However, in the future, if we change the training size, we'll have to do the calculation for this size and ratios and do the training again. And this. Here are the summaries of our experiments. We start with the base motors then added augmentation and added the custom size and ratio. Finally, we decided to select X101 with detection to default configurations. The reason is that it's easier to implement its genera that's usable for different territories, which is the main aim of this challenge as well. We have 51 and 51.4% for the F1 score on test 1 and test 2 correspondingly. This result are low but arguably acceptable because we use simple implementation and do not use examples because we think using examples are not practical in, in real life. We also do valuation of our result on the validation set. The red boxes are those annotated with validation set, which is a split from the training set, while the blue boxes are those detected by our motors with corresponding scores. It's observable that there are missing labels in these cases. There is a damage that we detected over here, but no label for this in here as well. And also there is a pothole in this region, but there is no annotation for it. We also do the evaluations on the testing sets. Let's say for this image, at first we see that our model detects a damage in this area but we cannot see any damage in this however when we increase the brightness and also zoom out actually there is one damage in this area similar story happened to another pictures here our model detect our damage but human cannot see that one up until the time that we add brightness and zoom out we'll see that there is actually a damage over here the observation is that there might be missing labels if we only use human for the laboring process
The recommendation is to combine machine learning and human in labeling process. Let's say machine learning is going to detect the damage and human is going to do the Q&A process. However, we always need to zoom and add brightness if it is lower than some threshold in order to avoid missing labels. We further explored the data and found this kind of errors. Data set might have been labeled by machine learning approach as well. And this kind of errors slip through the human quality assurance check. And our recommendation is to use the noisy student approach to add the training data incrementally. Specifically, we train a motor called a student and use it as a teacher to make prediction and add labels for our data. Then we look back and train another bigger modus and add more data and use its other teachers and so on and so forth to incrementally add the data to the training set. Finally, we should still pass the human quality assurance check with notes that we should zoom and change the brightness if needed. So it still has some limitations like the F1 score are low, but arguably acceptable because we do not use in jumpers because we think they are not practical to use in jumpers in this case. It's still relatively higher detection time compared to YOLO or SSD and our future group we would like to use noisy student approach to add more training data. We should visualize the data extracted at intermediate layers to analyze the behavior of the learned motors. We should also manually inspect 100 accurately predicted and another 100 inaccurately predicted in damages and assess our motors. Conclusion we experiment with base motors, default augmentations, artificial damages and other augmentations, test time augmentations, and also custom anchor size and ratios. And finally, we select the default configuration because they are simple, general, and transferable. We also do evolution on the training and find some missing labels and wrong labels. Also, we experiment with the test sets and found out that in several cases, machine learning motors outperform human. We provide recommendations to use combination of machine learning with noisy student approach and human for quality assurance in labeling process. Here are the source codes for our implementation. Thank you, and if you have any question, please address now or you can contact us.